Hello, so welcome to our, I believe, 2020, I'm looking down now, 22nd, wow, virtual bridge session. Uh, and here we are again, uh, and this time uh, we will be celebrating this momentous moment with David Hilston, who will be talking about um, Adobe Spark for education, an exciting travel down the video curation uh, development path. Oh, you know, I should have practiced that opening statement. I really should have. I just, I'm never going to be as good as Jason. Now, if you really want to see a professional at work, catch next week's sessions when Jason may be hosting, uh, and you'll see a much better intro. But <laughs> until then, <laughs> uh, over to David and over to Adobe Spark. Thanks, Kenji. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen. Can everybody see my PowerPoint? Yes. Yep, yep. And you can hear me. <laughs> so introduction to Adobe Spark. Now, uh, it was in, oops, there we are. It was uh, August 2019 that I started to use Adobe Spark in the classroom uh, because I wanted to find an alternative tool to some of the Microsoft applications that you find generally students have used in the past at school or previous courses or just in their leisure time. So Adobe Spark is an integrated suite of media creation applications developed by Adobe Systems. And it comprises of three separate design apps, uh, Spark Post, Spark Page, and Spark Video. Spark Video is the one that I'll, I'll focus on today just based on, on the actual time that we've got. Uh, but once you've gone seen the Spark video, you can apply what you've seen to the other apps as well. So uh, in August 2019, uh, I was delivering a unit called Digital Skills for Life and Work at level four to a preparation for employment course. This course, uh, generally the students the, that are on this course have generally disengaged from education. Uh, they've come from school uh, for various reasons that they've disengaged for, 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 from uh, learning. So uh, after speaking to the, the actual course team, we wanted to come up with something that was a bit more interactive, uh, have an active learning uh, environment in the classroom. So uh, I decided to use a, a range of software, uh, but today I'm going to talk about Adobe Spark the software that I used with this group. I also delivered as part of the ICT delivery to vehicle maintenance level four and interior design level five, the same software. Uh, so I'm going to go into the project brief that I set uh, and the, the actual students worked through. So can everybody see that brief? Yeah, good. Uh, so I can share this after it uh, and I'll give it, I'll send it to Kenji to upload onto uh, the resource Google uh, space. Uh, and it was really like an induction, an initial project that we set the students. So it's to make a movie to promote your course to prospective students in groups, research and developer project to make a short movie or a short slide, slide show. So they would take pictures, videos around the college, uh, you know, representing themes in the college. Now, I, I delivered this to two different groups, same course, one at Site Hill Campus and one at Granton Campus. Uh, they would make note of everything that uh, th they would actually uh, capture through video and through photography. They would download the photographs and the videos and to appropriate software. That appropriate software is Adobe Spark. Now, I've got to say, I hadn't really used it in the classroom before this. And I had played around with it. I have a bit of a background with Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator, which is, I would say, your high level uh, Adobe products. But what attracted me to Adobe Spark is it was free. So we'll be using it to add text, add effects, and add music or audio. So we kind of, first of all, put the students into groups and we set them different questions, different themes. Uh, they created mind maps and the mind maps were actually paper-based, first of all. So it wasn't that they were all on a computer and tuning into a screen. 
uh, and we put them to groups of two to three rather than two to four. Uh, I had 12 in, e in each class, so there was, there was four groups that we had. So we set them these themes and uh, they would then respond to these themes and start coming up with ideas through a mind map for their slideshow. Uh, basic information, how, we, how will you do this uh, going from step one to step six? So by the end of this, they would have a short slideshow. Uh, it was up to them how many uh, slides and how much content they wanted to put in. The purpose of this for me was to develop their digital skills and their digital literacy skills. Because we also spoke about ethics, consent, and themes for the project. So, you know, what's appropriate and what's not. Uh, you know, getting consent, getting permission from people if you're taking photographs. So we started to talk about things like web safety, cyber skills, naturally, through this project. Uh, so the students would then progress through this and we'd done it over a six uh, week period. I actually delivered to the group two hours a week uh, for, the six, for the six weeks, so that was 12 hour project. Everybody actually achieved it. Uh, and I've got to say, it was very much a learning by doing project. So that was the brief, I'm happy to share that with everybody because uh, it's actually quite good to get some context behind the actual software that you use. So it's a cloud-based application, Adobe Spark. Uh, the students actually registered for Adobe Spark using their college email, and they had to use a college email. Uh, it's a free application, it's an alternative to Microsoft, and it's very much a learning by doing task. I have a, 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 a rule uh, in the classroom that I try not to talk longer than 15 minutes. I like the students to be quite active very, very quickly. This project was a good example of this. Uh, and the way I'm actually going to be delivering this today, I'm probably going to be talking more longer than 15 minutes. I would think about 20 to 25 minutes and there'll be time for questions at the end. Uh, but I always think I'm a, I'm a great believer of active learning and learning by doing. So the students would actually sign up uh, through sign up for free. And that's when they would actually use their college email address. Uh, and that was actually quite a, a, a must. It was mandatory to use their college email. And I'll tell you the reason why is because they had to go back into their email to activate their account. So it means then they're using the college systems. So uh, naturally, they're starting to get their cell organized. And they're starting to understand how cloud uh, working is rather than going in uh, and looking at Microsoft Teams right away or looking at OneDrive right away. We actually done it through a project like this. That came later on in their course and it worked very well with everything uh, that, that, that was delivered after that. Uh, I'm going to go into Adobe Spark. Again, these this presentation will be available uh, and I've made it easier for me so I can just log straight in. Please let me know if you can't see. Can everybody see the Adobe website? Yep, great. So uh, I've logged in already because uh, I'm always worried about logging online just in case I actually hit my password is visible. So I've set that up, but it's actually quite straightforward to, to uh, uh, log in. Uh, as I say, you access the software through the, the Adobe website and spark.adobe.com. So if I was to quickly have a look at my, uh, let me just readjust this slightly for myself. If I was to quickly have a look at something I put together this morning, and it's not a piece of design work at all, I just wanted to look at the tools that are in there. And then we'll go back the way and I'll show you how you would create from, from scratch using this example. Now, this is very helpful. Uh, I make sure that all the students go through this one minute and seven seconds tutorial. So everything that I actually covered today is actually in this tutorial. Uh, 
And of course, you can say, don't show the tutorial again, but I encourage the students to actually, for the first two or three weeks, is to keep reinforcing what they're actually doing. Uh, so what this tutorial uh, delivers is what's in the assessment, the, the project brief. And that project brief is a learning activity and not a formal assessment, I must, I must add. So we just click into, I'm not gonna play all this, so, uh, so everything that was in that tutorial, and after this, once you get the link, you can actually go through that. Uh, and I have no doubts that everybody will be able to use this software a lot better than I will. Uh, and, you know, I think when people see the, 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 the word Adobe in front of a bit of software, they think this is going to be complex. This isn't. Uh, and it's a good starting point for certain groups and uh, I thought level three, level four groups, but it surprised me actually my interior designers at level five actually thought this was great for, for showing their portfolio work. And they picked this up and they actually taught me a few things about it. So I'm gonna just play this and preview it and then I'm gonna go back the way and show you how I went about that. There's no audio here apart from a bit of video I did this morning. And a bit of audio here. So how, how do you create that? Uh, I'm going to go back to my main screen again and I'm going to choose slideshow. So you get these different templates uh, and what I find is uh, I try to use the same ter terminology in the brief uh, to align it to the actual software itself. So the word slideshow. This will launch and what you'll find is at the bottom of the screen, there'll be a set of slides. First of all, I'll just put in Adobe Spark. I'm not going to save this one because I'm going to go back the way again. Uh, and then I'm going to choose a template, I'm going to call it, sh yeah, I'm going to go select the uh, show and tell. Sorry for the pause, but it will happen at some point. Again, you get this by default because I haven't ticked off, don't show the tutorial again. We won't go through that again, but that's a starting point. That is creating something based on the show and tell uh, template. And if I was to play that at the moment, all you'd have is blank screens. And we actually now populate or insert or apply the content to these slides. Okay, and that's where it all, all started. I'm gonna go back to here. Right, so I'm going to type in Adobe Spark as my project. I'm going to select show and tell. And I'm going to select a photograph. I'm going to upload a photo. Select that one there. And that's going to appear on my first slide. So I've got that photograph from own uh, folder space, but you can bring it in from your own Dropbox, uh, Google Photos, or Google Drive. I'm then going to move on to my next slide and I'm going to put some text in. And I'm going to put introduction to So with a text, you can increase it in size or you can decrease it. You can also change the theme. So you've got different themes that you can choose and you can see them changing to a different color. You can also change uh, the transition uh, and color and you get a quick preview at the right hand side or you can choose focus. So there is quite a range there and it is very much 
point and click uh, way of working. I'm going to go to my next slide and I'm going to bring in another photograph. And this time I'm going to bring something in from Find Free Photos. So I'm going to bring in I'm going to put in a keyword money and hopefully we have some few photographs that appear. Let's bring this one in here. And this time I'm going to uh, apply a bit of audio on top of this photograph. And to do that, I keep my finger down or my mouse, my pointer down on the keyboard. So I'll just start that again. I just want to show you it first and then I'm going to talk over that. Adobe Spark is a free product for education. It does have limited tools, but it is free. So what you'll find now, if I was to go back to the beginning and preview it, we have a bit of music over that. So you get the idea so far. So I'm applying uh, tools and uh, uh, you know techniques to the actual slideshow. What else can we do? Well, we can actually bring video in. Uh, so I'm going to select video like so, and let's select this one. And with the video, you have got uh, limited uh, amount of editing that you can do but you can start it at the beginning. I always find that when I actually do a bit of video uh, and I just use my iPhone this morning to do this, that there's always better to actually cut it at the beginning and then to cut it nearer the end. Okay. I would then just save that like so. And we don't know why that's come up, appeared upside down, but it has. I'll maybe actually go back to that and work out why it shouldn't have. Uh, so the next stage that we'll look at is you'll find that there is actually music uh, and you've got a range of uh, audio uh, that you can actually choose from. Uh, but there's, there is a limitation to Adobe Spark where if you've got a bit of video in there and you've also got you want to apply a bit of music, you can't apply them both at the same time. There may be a way, and I can see that Jason's gone upside down. Thanks for that. <laughs> uh, yeah, that you can't apply them both. So that's a limit. There may be a way, but I haven't found a way of doing that, that you can't have a bit of video and music on at the same time. You can do it, but they both, uh, uh, you know, cancel each other out, which isn't uh, good if you're trying to listen to something. Okay, so, but music on, uh, and you'll find that I have actually applied uh, already a bit of music because we've played it back. Uh, if I go back into the next slide, and we have a look at another bit, another photograph, and I'm going to type in, uh, yeah, I'm going to type in computer is my keyword. And I'm going to select that image there. And just to show you, you can actually add text on top of photographs. So I'm just going to put teamwork here. And the last slide, and then I'll go back to my original one again. Uh, I'm going to put in another photograph and I'm going to select another photograph and this time I'm going to put education. Quite interesting I've chosen money, computer and education. I don't know what's going through my head at the moment. So uh, I'm going to select education. Hopefully it will come another range of images. Yeah, I quite like that one. 
So now I can go to layout and I can split the screen. And I can add text there or I could add another photograph. Like so. And again, you can increase or decrease that. So in a very short while, what I've done, including me being upside down, is I've actually put a basic uh, video together. We'll actually just preview this one and we'll go back to my other one that I started off on. There's no audio, there's no music, but you should hear audio there. And you'll find the last slide, any photographs that you have used that were free have been credited by uh, uh, on the last slide. I'm going to quit that and I'm going to go back to my original one now. And now I'm going to play this and maybe review a wee bit more of it. So uh, you've got th uh, three main areas at the top here. You've got preview, which allows you to preview your slideshow or your video. You have share, which you can publish. And if you publish it, it creates a, an MP4, MP4. Or you can invite. Uh, and what I got the students to do is to actually invite me to view their uh, productions and they would just put my email address in there. Again, it's using the college systems. Uh, and they can also download. So they would then download the MP4, uh, which then they would upload into uh, Moodle uh, in a submit box, like a drop box. And they would keep a copy themselves. Now, what I like about that, they're using cloud, they're using Moodle, uh, they're using the college systems and also there's nothing personal there that they're, they're going to use apart from their actual slideshow itself. So it's a, it's a good induction, induction to uh, Adobe Spark, but it's also a good induction to the college and the college systems. Okay, now let me show you another one. Uh, the vehicle maintenance, and I should have that one here. I know I'm running over a wee bit, uh, but, and if I go along, yeah, the vehicle maintenance guys, what I set them was, uh, and this was in the first two or three weeks of their course, uh, put them in groups, and there was a range of cards on the table. They were to choose a card, uh, all the cards were face down, so all the information on the cards was face down. And they would pick up a card and it would be something related to vehicle maintenance. So the first one, when it appears, is about an oil change. So th the two or three, we need to put a slideshow based on how to change oil step-by-step -step guide. Then another, another car would be how to you change your car battery. Uh, so how do you to change a wind, windscreen wiper? You get the idea. So it's something related to their course, but it's actually they're developing digital skills as, as they're applying uh, their context of, of, of their course. So this one here, uh, let me just preview this. And you can hear there's music being added to this. And it also gets them thinking about step by step and uh, in a logical way, uh, naturally.
So that's two, uh, so that was a preparation for employment course, and that was also the vehicle maintenance course that, uh, uh, you know, where I used the Adobe Spark. And one of the questions that I had, and I think it was at, uh, when I presented at the, uh, there was a teach meet, and somebody had said, well, why didn't you just use PowerPoint for that? We, they could have done PowerPoint. Well, the reason is they've used PowerPoint before. And what you find across colleges and schools, it's about them learning something new. Uh, they'll still learn the Microsoft Office applications and Office 365, but right at the beginning, they're wanting to learn something new and uh, engage them immediately. And all these projects it is very much uh, learning by doing. So it, it's not something that's long and winded. They're actually learning as they're actually working through the project. And yeah, it, it, it was a joy actually to, to, to work with these two groups with this software because it was going around troubleshooting. Uh, and if I go back to my presentation, Can you see my presentation again? And, and I'm going to just move that across. Right. So uh, I'll share this presentation. Also, there's good some good teachers resources, uh, the link there, uh, which you can go into. Uh, and there's a wide range of step-by-step uh, -step tutorials and examples and case studies. This is all on the actual uh, Adobe website, uh, and you also have, there was something that I actually just read last night. I thought it was anything new that was about that. Uh, they have a premium version of Adobe Spark, which they usually charge for. Uh, it is free for two months at the moment. So there's a lot more extra tools in there that you can actually use. What I've shown you, the tools that I've shown you, is for the free version only, but there's a lot more tools. And I'm just thinking, with me appearing upside down, I bet there's something there that can actually switch that around. Uh, I'll need to try and work that one out. Uh, that's me. Any questions? Just before everyone else gets in, a very quick yeah. question is, did, did, so Adobe has a separate product which does similar things, but designed yeah. for mobile. So yeah. you, you can't get Adobe Spark as a mobile app, but Adobe has something called uh, Adobe Rush, I think, called which does similar things. Do you have a preference for mobile versus desktop? Well, laptop? I, don't know if you, I don't know if you can really see that. I, I can, but yeah. They do, Adobe do have a, and I, you know, there's, there's a lot more to, to, to this software. And this is available for the free software. It doesn't cost you anything that if you can actually see, probably not very clearly folks, sorry, that you can actually see it's synced. So what I've been working on the desktop is now synced onto my phone through the Adobe Spark. Now, uh, I've got to be honest, when I was working this with the students, and especially the tier design students, that was something that they taught me. <laughs> and not that I didn't know how to sync, but guy in the class said, look, I did, there's, a, there's an actual app available. Uh, and he downloaded it and he said, I can edit what I've just done. And then I got him to share it across the class. So with software uh, like Adobe Spark, because it's quite straightforward and simple to use, uh, that the, you find that students actually are more creative uh, and engage with it more. I think the more complex something is at the beginning, especially with lower level groups, uh, then they never engage. And that's untrue. And I'm not saying never engage. It's more difficult for them to engage. Yeah. Um, I think we have time for uh, one, one or two questions. Does anyone have a question? I can see that uh, Leanne mentioned that she does use a similar GoPro Quick. My All right, yes, yeah, app. yeah, um, that's good. Yeah, wants to have a look at Adobe Spark. Does anyone else yep, have a question then? <laughs> See, you, you were so good by covering everything <laughs> that it just 
what can I say? So um, is, is there anything, okay, my, my final question for the recorded segment is, um, is there anything missing from the Adobe Spark software that you would have liked to have seen uh, or been able to use with your students? Or was there any specific problem that students ran into while, while using the software? Yeah, it's the, uh, when you add music and you've also got a bit of video, then uh, what you can't do is that the, the music gets added across all slides. So when it comes to the video slide, it, the music doesn't stop. It actually overplays each other. And that was my, 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 my a good question. That was my point uh, earlier on that uh, I don't know how to do it. And I've actually looked on the forums. There is no way to do it. So with a limited version that uh, which is free, there is no way of doing it. I don't think there's any way of having the two working with the premium version either, uh, but I'm actually uh, not totally sure about that. I know there are workarounds where you could produce yeah. potentially a picture and or a picture with specific music on a separate thing like PowerPoint, but that yeah. takes you away from doing everything inside Adobe Spark, which doesn't really work. So yeah. that's that is that's an interesting point. That's, yeah, that's that, that that's that's the piece because that's the that's the question that uh, uh, the students have asked. Uh, and I wasn't really aware of that until it actually went into production when the student says, oh, but I don't want the, the, the music to, to play at that point. Okay, so it adds across all the slides, so it's cascaded. So there is limitations, but if you set a brief that is achievable based on the software, then uh, there's nothing wrong with them asking questions like that because maybe actually you need to go to a, a, a more specialist bit of software. Okay, yeah. that, that, that definitely. Question? Sorry, yes, uh, absolutely. Time for yeah. one last question for the recording Sorry, audience. regarding the, the, the video side of things, yeah. um, you, you were shown there how to film a video. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I'll come in. Okay, so sorry, I'm trying to talk right. to someone else that's in there. So, is, is there an option there where you could basically split that video into two parts? Uh, yes, you, you can. The And I'll tell you why I'm hesitant. Uh, uh, was it William that's. that's yeah, hi. There? Yeah, I'll tell you I'm hesitant, William, is the the video tools are very, very limited. Right. Uh, okay. And uh, going back to, the, I suppose, the, the point that Kenji was, was uh, talking about, you'd better going out with Adobe Spark to do that and bring it back in, but then it defeats the whole purpose of it. The Adobe yeah, Premium, I think possibly that there's a lot more options there. Okay. I think, I think you Thank can. You. You can use Adobe uh, Rush, obviously, as an alternative, but yeah. with Adobe Spark, I think you can duplicate um, yeah, there a, is a slide duplicate. and then trim, you know, yeah. you. split a video by trimming one half on one version and uh -huh. trimming the other clone to get your, your effect. Sorry. Okay. So that, that's, that's all we have time for in, in this recorded session. So if you're joining us via the recording, thank you very much. Hope you're able to join us for another virtual uh, bridge session. Um, but until then, please stay safe and we hope to see you again soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.